Hey guys, what's up? My name is Anthony and welcome to another edition of BNA Sports Talk. So we're about a week from the draft. I'm not doing a countdown or anything. I feel like I've been saying that for the last couple of days. And uh, we're on to the, to the 10th team that I'm going to be talking about. Or the 11th or 12th, whatever. It's the uh, Denver Broncos. So this is a series where I'll be kind of looking at all the teams in the NFL draft. Seeing how their last season was. Seeing how they're doing in free agency. Uh, how they did in free agency. And then seeing what their ceiling floor is for next year. Uh, with their draft this year. Okay, so let's start with the Broncos with their last season. So I pretty much got their record exact. I said that they'd go 7-9. They went 6-10. and 10. Case Keenum played pretty well. Uh, he didn't play horribly. I mean, he did have... T- uh, 18 interception, uh, 18 touchdowns, 15 interceptions, but a lot of those I think were uh, either mental errors or sometimes there's just a wide receiver dropping it. I mean, interceptions come. Uh, Case Kim didn't have the best supporting cast. They got rid of Demarius Thomas. Emmanuel Sanders, I think, was on and off the field. They didn't have a tight end that they could rely on. And the main thing was with this team, which I liked, was they played up to their competition. They, you know, they almost beat the Chiefs twice. They, like every the both games they played the Chiefs, they lost by only like less than seven points. I think they beat the Chargers. They beat the Steelers. They played up to their competition, but then they lost games like to the Raiders. I think they lost a the game, and then they lost a the game to the Jets, the Browns. Uh, the Browns were pretty good last year, but you know they they kind of played down to their competition. And I think what you're looking for with Case Keenum is he's gonna he's gonna win those games that you need to like. When the game's on the line and when you're playing a good team, he's going to win those games. They're just losing to bad teams because they didn't have a good roster. Now, when you, that, this means that the, I don't think the team was playing hard when they're facing an easy team. They weren't good enough to beat those easy teams. But when they played a hard team, they had like a, an edge, a chip on their shoulder. Uh, so going into the season, they had Joe Flacco. I don't really like that signing. I know. But now that you have Joe Flacco, you have to commit to him. You can't pick Drew Locke. You can pick your quarterback of the future. Your quarterback of the future is going to come. Maybe they're eyeing Trevor Lawrence. It's going to come in two, three years. Uh, so as far as what they should do in this draft, um, number 10, their biggest needs, in my opinion, are defensive tackle. So you can get pressure up the middle because last year they really struggled against the run. Um, you have Bradley Chubb and Von Miller on the edge, but up the middle, there really isn't anybody to, to get pressure on the, you know, on the quarterback up the middle. So this quarterback could just step up and fire, you know, um, they also need a tight end slash wide receiver because they did lose Demarius Thomas. And, you know, looking at their wide receiver depth, um, as it stands right now in the beginning of the season, they're going to have they're gonna have a wide receiver named Fred Brown, Aaron Burbridge, River Kraft. Like, I'm looking at all these names, and none of them jump out to me. Cortland Sutton maybe is good. And you have tight ends like Jake Butt, Tony Fermagalli. Um, I would trade down almost if I were them, but no, I think if Noah Fan or TJ Hawkinson is there, you pick him. A reliable target for Joe Flacco to throw to. Uh, get those third down completions. Get a guy that can get some rhythm going. And once Joe Flacco gets a rhythm going, I think, you know, he could, um, they could beat anybody, you know. So looking at their defensive lineman, Shelby Harris is pretty good. But I'm looking at all these names and none of them... You know, they didn't have any talent up the middle. So, like I mentioned before, their offensive line is good enough. I think that should be able to protect Joe Flacco. Maybe a round two pick if uh, Dalton Reisner drops to them or uh, Garrett Bradbury. But I think they did a good job addressing their offensive line in the offseason. You had uh, Jawan James sign with them. Um, you had other, you had Billy Turner left and uh, Matt Paradis left with two key pieces, but I think they did just enough to shore up their offensive line, which is around the middle of the pack last year. Uh, Joe Flacco can survive with the middle of the pack offensive line. He just needs weapons to throw to. You have Philip Lindsay, who is a lot of people are saying he's one of the best running backs in the league now. I'm not really buying it, but I do think it's a really great story with Philip Lindsay, how he undrafted, living in his mom's house. Um, I, I like that because it adds character to the locker room, makes him fight even more. You also have way more than enough corners, so I don't think they're selecting Greedy Williams. I've seen that in a lot of mock drafts. People don't realize, oh yeah, wait, they addressed their corner um, you know, in the offseason. They signed like four different corners. Bryce Callahan from the Chicago Bears, Devontae Bosby, uh, I think Kareem Jackson too, if, I, if I'm not wrong. I mean, they have a pretty good set of cornerbacks, and they already had Chris Harris Jr., who's I think going to stay on the team this year. So I think their secondary is good. I'm not too sure about their safeties. But I think it's good. I mean, you may be able to... Uh, this is not a safety strong class. So I would say go a tight end in the beginning and then wait till any single wide receiver until later in the draft where you can find value. Um, it would find value in wide receivers. I made a video about where you can find value in the draft. In wide receivers and running backs, I mean, there's a big drop-off and then it's everyone else. So 
maybe try to get yourself an Antonio Brown later in the draft. So as far as li- linebackers are fine at, I mean, y- yeah, you just got Bradley Chubb. So, I mean, your defense is fine. You just need one piece up the middle, and I think you're fine. I mean, you lost a couple of lineback pieces, uh, linebackers. Um, Jerrell Garcia-Williams, Shaquille Barrett left, um, and I think Shane Ray. Uh, I'm not sure if Shane Ray is coming back. His status is kind of murky. I think he has some drug problem or something. Defense is good. I think this is a, a championship defense as constructed. Uh, you could go up against anybody, and that was shown last year. They, when they had to face the Chiefs, when they had to face, uh, you know, the Steelers. When they, uh, they, yeah, when they had to face the Steelers, their defense showed up pretty well. But it's with teams like the Jets where they just didn't show up. Oh yeah, and and they uh, got a new head coach. Vance Joseph got replaced by um, Vic Fangio, who, if you don't know, was the Bears defensive coordinator last year with that filthy Bears defense. That that defense did have a lot, have a lot of talent, but this defense kind of reminds me a lot of that. Uh, you have a, a veteran, then you have a, a lot of young guys that they are coming up on the team. And I think Vic Fangio can make this defense work. Just give him a defensive tackle. And I think this could be one of the top, I'd say, seven defenses in the league. I'm just worried about their schedule. Um, I think I don't think Vance Joseph was the right guy for this team. He couldn't prove himself in a couple years. And they've had uh, trouble with quarterback and coach, actually, over the past couple years. Uh, I think that, like I said, they shouldn't have got a bit of Case Keenum because he could win those big games like how Eli used to. And I'm not sure if Joe Flacco can do that anymore. That's the main question with this team. Can Joe Flacco work through this hard schedule? And will this team have enough patience? Will John Elway have enough patience for this to work? So to recap, I say in number 10, you pick a tight end. Number 41, you pick a defensive tackle. If Dexter Lawrence is still available, I think he'd be a good deal there. This is a heavy defensive class, so I think one of them will drop down there. Or you could pick an offensive tackle if Dalton Reisner is there. You know, you help Joe Flacco out. You can't, you can't have too many offensive linemen. I mean, you basically just replaced Case Keenum with Joe Flacco. I think they're both the similar characteristics. They're both big arm. I guess Joe Flacco has more experience, but Case Keenum is younger, and I think that they should have just stick, you know, stuck with him. They they had a lot of injuries last year, like their rookies and um, the rookie wide receiver Cortland Sutton went down, Philip Lindsay went down, and a bunch of other players. IR, IR, IR. And they kind of, that kind of, I think, ruined their momentum throughout the season, too. So it wasn't just them underperforming. It was also a lot of players going on injured reserve. And they had a lot of big marquee wins that kind of inspire you for the future. I don't see why you just blew it all up and got Joe Flacco. I think John Elway basically just saw, you know, he's your guy. This this guy is, you know, he's a Super Bowl champion. Case Keenum hasn't done anything. I mean, they did go to the NFC Championship that one year, but... Uh, I don't get it. Through recording, I realized I mentioned that they had weakness in linebacker, and I do realize that now that they switched to a 3-4, I think a couple years ago now, that Bradley Chubb and Von Miller are technically linebackers. I still consider them defensive ends for some reason, but I think they're good at the linebacker position. Like I said, they just need a nose tackle and some guys up front that can that can move some people, and I think that, that value can... I think you're going to be able to get a guy. I think that Dominican Sue is still your guy. He's big. He's he's present up the middle. And the, you can get a guy at 41 that I think will be pretty serviceable. I think they would pay him a little bit too much. I'm not sure how their salary cap is. But I think adding Dominican Sue would be good for this defense. It would make it actually like an elite defense. They could bring it to a top three next year, especially with Vic Fangio. And at uh, your third round pick, you have a pretty decent third round pick at number 71. I think you go safety there with Taylor Rapp, Deontay Thompson. I think a pretty good safety is going to drop at you there. So, um, yeah, Joe Flacco is your long-term solution. He's not a one-two-year bridge gap quarterback. You need some stability at quarterback, and they haven't had that in a while. So, uh, you, you're you're looking at five, six years of Joe Flacco. Um, make sure that you surround him with the right pieces to make him successful. Make sure it's a, a long-term solution. You have you have some youth talent on this team that could you know, carry him. And I say as far as the Super Bowl window. Uh, they can't win the Super Bowl this year, but um, Patrick Mahomes is going to be the king of this division for a while, and the Raiders are in the come up. It depends how Joe, uh, Derek Carr does, but I'd say in three years, I could see them winning a Super Bowl, and I think it's a really short window because Joe Flacco isn't getting any younger. And yeah, so I'd say three years Super Bowl, 57, I think that would be. I thought, you know, the Broncos are a pretty good team. You know, they could um, they can make it pretty far. Until I looked at their um, their schedule. Okay, they start off the Raiders away. The Raiders are going to have all these new defensive linemen. It may work, may not. So I would say that that's a toss-up. That's a toss-up for me, especially since the way. Then you have the Bears, Packers, Jaguars, Chargers. 
So you can easily go 0-5 in those first five games. It's not, you don't have any easy teams. But then as then you have the then you have the, the Titans, Chiefs, Colts. I mean, you probably get, Titans is a tough game. That's not an easy game. That's at home. That's at mile high. You have the advantage. You may win that. So I'm looking at maybe two and four through the first six. Then you have the Chiefs, Colts. Um, that I think those are two losses unless Joe Flacco can you know work some magic. Then Browns, Vikings, Bills, Chargers, Texans. I don't think the Texans are gonna be as good, but that's a way. Chiefs, Lions, Raiders. I mean, I'm looking at this, and there are no give me wins. There are no games that are just like, oh. Um, yeah, they, they, they should be able to win that. Every game is going to be a challenge. So this team, I think Max is going to have eight wins. Uh, that's if they start off hot and, you know, they they trail off towards the end of the season. But I could see them easily going 0-5 and then only winning four games next season and being one of the top five picks. So if I if I had a guess, i say they're going 5-11 and next year. That's my record prediction as it stands today. It depends how they do in the draft. Um yeah so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video if you want to see more of these i could start pumping them out a little faster but i want them to be better quality let me know what you guys think the broncos should do let me know what you guys think their record's gonna be next year all that in the comment section down below and uh yeah i liked having the discussion with you guys because some of the fans know way more than me because i'm not a broncos fan i did follow them a little bit more than the average team last year but yeah anyway thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in my next video bye guys